we're finishing up our series called R4, um, and it's all about who we are now, okay? And so when I say that, I want to get very intentional um, and serious about that. Everything that we do as a student ministry will come back to these four things. Kindness, in the same way that Jesus shows us kindness. Uh, reaching the lost, that is students, high school students and middle school. But for you guys, high school students that don't know Jesus or have uh, walked away from Jesus. Uh, being together, unifying. We talked about that last weekend uh, at the retreat. If you, if you went to the retreat last weekend, let me hear you. All right. Um, fun weekend. If you didn't go, we missed you. But we talked for the whole weekend about being together. So if you just heard someone yell woo, ask them about the weekend, all right? Because we talked a lot about being together. And tonight we're going to talk about what it means to be real with my forehead not included. All right. So I know, I know. I'm just really bad at this stuff. Okay, so when I say be real, this is what I mean, guys. Be the same person everywhere you go. Be the same person everywhere you go. If you're somebody that's filled with joy, someone that's filled with laughter, somebody that makes other people laugh, somebody that, um, I don't know, you just, you just carry a contagiency to you. Contagiency, that's not a word. A contagious spirit of joy um, or just bringing other people up, encouraging, be that person. If you're a person that's quiet, a little more reserved, um, be that person. Allow God to use your gifts in that way. If you're somebody that maybe fit into one of those two boats or you're just somewhere in the middle, but you have some of your things you're struggling with right now, um, maybe you're, you're depressed, maybe you're really not looking forward to fall break, you're really not looking forward to being out of a routine, um, or maybe you've been struggling all semester. Um, I want you guys to know, this is a place that I want you to be who you are. I want you to see who God created you to be, and for you to find the exact purpose that God has for your life. But you will not be looked at differently here by our student ministry, by our leaders, by each other, by me, ever. No matter what you walk in with, no matter what you leave with. We want you to grow closer and closer to Jesus but we want you to be the same wherever you go, all right? And so I, I want to talk just a little bit tonight about being the same wherever you go because I believe it's a really big deal to Jesus. Um, I think we got a meme to show real quick. Anybody in here know somebody like this? Fakest person you know talks about being real? Anybody know somebody? Me? Wow. Uh, bring the band. Band back up. Band closing. Um, <laughs> It do look like me. Thank you. Not. <laughs> okay. I was like, I knew this was a mistake putting up a meme. Um, but everybody knows somebody like that, or maybe in a very literal way you've been that person, or you know people that have seen you as that person. That was me um, in high school. That was me into college. And then I started finding out, hearing from people, not hearing from people, that I thought, like, we were tight. I thought we were friends. And I started to hear things like, man, you're, you're actually, we, we know who you really were. And guys, I'm not like saying, like, I did all these crazy things but never told people or anything like that. But I'm just saying, like, I was, I was a, a really a two-faced person in a lot of ways. And I, I grew up in the church like a lot of you probably have. I grew up in good, strong family. My parents divorced when I was 19, but like I had a lot of things to be grateful for. But I still found myself at your age and even a little bit older into college where I was, that's who I was. I was fake. I probably didn't really figure it out, start figuring it out. I'm still not fully figured it out. Um, working on it, but I, I, thought, I probably didn't finally start figuring it out until I was like 22, 21, 22. So I don't know if you're in that same boat, if you could actually look in the mirror and no filter, actually say, man, yeah, I'm, I'm fake. I'm not the same person that people see me in here or people see me at school. I, I act different everywhere I go. But that was me, um, and I started to hear about that more and more. One of the people, um, 
I wish, I wish he was here tonight listening to this, but we'll have to go back and watch it. Michelle was actually one of the people, my wife, that told me that I was, I was pretty fake to everybody. It's like, why'd you take a chance on me? Um, but no, she told me, she's like, actually, nobody liked you. And like, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm being serious. Like, if you laugh, it's fine. But like, I'm not saying that just to be like, to make it seem like some crazy big deal. But like, to me, it was a big deal. Because I was like, pff, pff, yeah, right. But she's like, no, like, I know the people that, like, you're friends with. I know the parents that, you know, you thought, like, they trusted you, whatever. Like, no. And it took me a while to figure that out. Um, but I was a pretty, uh, I was a pretty fake person, I guess. I, I, I struggled with authenticity. I wasn't the same wherever I was. And I think at times in high school, I realized that, and I tried to really work through it, but, uh, I don't know, I just I brushed this aside because I struggle with a lot of pride. And um, so we're going through this series, and as we were like getting ready for the vision launch and kindness lost together real, and I kept coming back to this word real because I think it was, it was just getting at me how personal it's been in my life. Um, like I said, even to this day, how hard it is to always be the same person. I don't know, it just, it is for me. It's just hard for me to be the same person wherever I go. Um, sometimes I, I get a little caught up just in my own tendencies, my own personality of like the way that I see things, the way that I like things done, so on and so forth. And um, um, it's hard. I don't know if you guys are there. Um, I don't know where you're at with that, but um, this is something that I'm working through myself. And I feel like God put this on my heart, put this on our heart as we plan out our vision because it's important that we are real at all times. And guys, like I said, the last like several weeks being in here with you guys and being in community with you guys here, retreat everywhere, um, it's, it's been really, really refreshing for my soul. Um, and, and I'm not worried about, I'm not worried, I'm worried less about this and that and this part and that part. I'm just like focused on like what's God doing right here. And I, I think that's God helping me see that I need to be authentic with him. Because here's the truth. I got three things for you guys, really simple things uh, to take away, talk about in groups. And I hope you, I always encourage people to write them down. Notebook, put it in your phone, put it in your notes, write them down, share them in your stories, um, save it as your wallpaper, whatever, put it in your be real. Um, but I got three things for you guys, okay? Why is being real important? So we first got to establish the why. We can't talk about all these things and just say, man, got to do these things. We got to live these things out unless there's a why behind it. And I think this is the most simple way of explaining the why. Because when you're real, when you're authentic, when you're the same person everywhere you go, when you understand, man, this is, this is who God created me to be, and I'm going to live that out for his glory, then you stop pretending you're perfect. And so really that's my first encouragement to you behind the why is stop pretending you're perfect. Stop pretending that you got it all together, whether it's on social media or on your team or um, in whatever academic thing you're involved in, whatever it is, your job, don't, don't pretend you're somebody that you're not. You're imperfect. You're messed up, just like I am. But that doesn't mean that you should live in that. It doesn't mean you should live in shame, condemnation, because God gave us Jesus as the best form of grace that we could ever experience. And too often, I've lived it in this way, and I don't know if you've been there too, but too often I've lived out grace in the way of like, oh yeah, Jesus saved me. Got to remember back to like, this is why I followed Jesus. But I think grace is more than that. It's, 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 it's understanding grace every day. It's living in God's grace every day. Not so that we can go on sinning and go on struggling, but be real, be authentic about where you're at. Share that with somebody. Don't hide those things. And don't think that you're too messed up or too far gone. You belong to God. You belong to him. But we got to admit, we're not perfect. We have to live by grace. And here's another cool thing about the why. I think when you understand um, why being real is so important, 
you'll start to see things change in your life. You'll start to see your attitude change. You'll start to see your joy, your state of joy change, um, even just being productive. And like, you'll start to see that change. If you understand how God wants you to live in a real way, in the way he created you, God will change you from the inside out. And when he changes you, that is something that's attractive to other people. And no, I don't just mean a, a, attractive in all y'all's good looks. I mean your, your attractiveness in the way that you live. And, and earlier today, I brought up a couple students and I was like, hey, I asked them. I said, if you live differently, will everybody see that and respond positive, positively to that? And the answer was what? No, right? Not everybody's going to be positive to that. You'll get shamed. You'll get hated on. But the difference that God can make around you, in the people around you, the people outside looking in, is it's crazy. But it's your choice. So what choice will you make? Will you accept that God made you in a specific way to live for him? Will you be real in your relationship with him? Or will you just continue just living the way that you've always lived? Celebrating the highs, being really down in the lows, or even being somewhere in the middle. I think so much we just forget that we're human. We forget that we're fallen. We pretend to be someone else, something else, instead of just saying, here I am, God. What do you want to do with my life? It'll change people around you, and it'll change perception that people have of you. I think that was the biggest thing I got caught up in. When I started to hear some of the things about me, that I was like, man, people actually think that about me? People actually say those things about me? Was that I was like, man, I, I don't want to be perceived that way. I don't think that what everybody thinks about me is the most important thing in my life, but I think that it has merit. Uh, somebody told me a few years back, uh, just a couple years ago, um, in my first job in ministry, I was struggling with some things. I was actually struggling getting along with a few people. Um, people in here that know me pretty well uh, know what I'm know like what I'm talking about if they know me, um, and I, I I don't know I I was probably just overzealous over passionate about some things and then that just got rubbed the wrong way with a few people and um, anyway this mentor in my life he said um, he said you know after I was like explain everything hey what do I do but I'm frustrated with this he said you know Luke he said if you feel like you need to justify yourself. You always have to check your position. You always got to check where you're at. If you feel like you got to justify something you did, something you believe in, something you stand for, you, you got to check where you're at. And he also said, man, there's always, a, there's always a sliver of truth in everything that somebody says. And so I've been trying to work on that. Like, Jesus, would you please help me in the way that I accept um, people speaking into me? Your perception matters in your culture. You guys know that. Like, social media and um, success and all those things, like, you're not created to live for those things, but, like, people measure you in those type of ways. But if people perceive you as being different for something that God purposed you for, you just have to, you have to believe in that. You have to walk in that. You can't give up. You can't give in to what culture says because that's not who God created us to be. So that's number one, why it's important. Um, number two, Jesus said some things about being real. And I like what he said in Luke chapter 12, uh, verse 2. Sorry, I don't think I have this one on the screen, but you can look it up in your Bible or I'll just read it to you from mine. I encourage you to write it down. This is, this is really good when it comes to like accountability, being real with where you're at. Uh, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. He was talking about the Pharisees. Um, and he said this, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is their hypocrisy. There is nothing covered that won't be uncovered. There's nothing hidden that won't be made known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. Whatever you have whispered in an ear in private rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. What was Jesus saying here? 
Jesus was saying, dude, the things in your life, whether it's revealed to someone else, at some point in your life, whether it comes out in a certain way or you struggle with it because of it, or whether it comes out when you meet Jesus, like, the things in your life will be revealed before God. That's accountability at its truest, most authentic form. And so I think there's a warning there that Jesus says. Jesus says, hey, I'm trying to prepare you, because he said, this is the way the Pharisees lived, legalistic. They followed the rules. They did all these things, and they thought, man, I just I live a good life. I don't do all these things, and I'm good. I'm getting into heaven. I got my ticket. Um, but Jesus said, no, there's a time coming that the things that are covered up will be revealed, will be made known to all. And so I think Jesus is saying, hey, it's so vital for your witness, for your purpose in this life, that you are real about who you are, about where you're at. Do that in a safe place if you're struggling with things, if you've really made some big mistakes. Do that in a safe place, but talk about it. Be real about it. Understand that Jesus shows you grace daily. That's what Jesus says. Jesus says, man, I lived out the example for you. And I love that Jesus lived out so many different examples. When he was sad, he, he wept or he went away from people at times um, to pray to his father. When he was mad, he took that out in a righteous way. Um, when, his, when his father was disregarded, like when they were selling money in the temple or, or sell, selling stuff in the temple to make money. Um, Jesus dealt with each thing he came across because he was fully human just like you and I. That's because he was authentic. That's because he wasn't setting an example that he was better than you or you or me. He was real about who he was and he gave us this instruction this morning. He said, man, you gotta be authentic with where you're at. Be real about where you're at. And the third thing is this, the how. I love what Psalm 139 says in verse 23 and 24. I got this one on the screen for you guys. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. If you struggle with reading the Bible every day, once a week, period. If you struggle with reading the word, try reading a psalm a day. Psalm a day keeps the devil away, they say. Um, psalm a day, Proverbs a day. Re start there. See the way that the psalmists write out their prayers, write out their praises, write out their anxieties, their struggles to God. I mean, here we see them saying, God, just search me. Look within me. We know God already can already do that, but it's that, that realness that the psalmist speaks with, like, search me, God. Look within me inside and out. He, sa he says, know my heart. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. What is it that makes you anxious? What is it that makes you sad? What is it that gets you down? The example here is, just taking that to God and saying, God, please just search me, test me, look at my heart, look where I'm at. And when we do that, it says, point, it, the psalmist says, point out anything in me that offends you, God. Man, I need to pray that prayer every day, guys. Because I know I offend God every day in some way with my pride, with my struggles. And the end of that verse, lead me along the path of everlasting life. We can't walk that path ourselves. And that's so easy to think, man, we just, we just do it. We just, walk, we just walk this path out. We just live our life as a Christian, and it's easy. It's not. God says, look at what the psalmist says. Be real with where you're at. Ask God to search your heart. Ask God to test you. Maybe that's something you need to do tonight before you go to groups. You just need to, you need to pray that prayer. So that you can be real in your group, so that you can share, so, so that you can take those things before God and before some of your people that you trust. When we do that, it says that, you know, that, that, that God will show us the things that offend him. Show us the things that keep us from him. I wish I had lived with this truth my whole life. 
and not just in the last several years, and especially not in the last, not just in the last month or so. But I came across this quote, and it said this on, uh, it was on being real or an authentic. It said, as a Christ follower, you need to ask yourself, am I the real deal? Am I living a life worthy of imitation? Am I just carrying the title of Christian, believer, churchgoer, different? So I'm going to ask myself that every day this week. Am I real in my relationship with Jesus? Am I living a life that someone else would say, I want to be, I, I, I don't want to be like him, but I want that what Luke has. Luke has something that he carries with him every day that he lives with. I want that. Are you living that way? I know I got to get way better at that, guys. I'm too up and down and up and down in my feelings and my emotions. Are you living a life worthy of imitation? At the end of it all, we have to stop acting like we have it all together. Stop acting like we're perfect and just be who Jesus created you to be. Um, this morning, I, I shared a story about um, somebody in my life that I think was more real to me than anybody that I know. His name was John Ogle, and uh, he was one of my Sunday school teachers way back in the day. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I was really young when he was my teacher. I think I was like nine or ten. I was right, I think it was right before middle school. And, um, but, man, he was the guy there. He was there week in and week out. Um, and I just remember him being, like, super kind, always being that guy that would, like, you know, that would put his arm around you, like, how you doing today? Like, always have joy. You guys have somebody like that in your life or have had somebody? Like, everybody's got that person, parent, friend, mentor. Um, and I just remember, like, that was a, that was a pretty cool example. But... I didn't really think a whole lot about it uh, as far as being real, being authentic until I was in college and I heard that he passed away. I heard he got cancer. And this was a guy, single dad, didn't have a high income, barely had enough to get by. Had two kids, I think. Um, didn't get to see him very often. Um, but it wasn't just that he showed up at church every Sunday. Um, it was that I remember everybody that I talked with about John, especially when he passed, when I was talking to some people from my old church that I grew up at, they, would, they always kept just saying the same thing about him. I was like, man, John, he was, he was always the same person. You just knew that about him. He was always the same person wherever he was. He always lived with authenticity. And I remember thinking, man, Jesus, that's why you put him in my life. I was so young, but that's why you put him in my life. So I could look back and say, that's somebody who follows Jesus in the way that I need to follow Jesus. So as we get ready to go to groups, I want to challenge you with this. How do you need to be real in your walk with Christ today? How do you need to be real as a high schooler? Walk that out. Take a step. You may be like me. You got, may have a long ways to go. People may think something totally different in you right now than what you really are. But God loves you. And each of us have an opportunity to be real in our faith. And God will change things around us. He'll change people around us when we do it.